I ask about Frost because um, I can't remember now how long ago it was. It, it wasn't last week or the week before, but it certainly wasn't very long ago, maybe three weeks ago, something like that. I mean, we, we had one night of very severe frost, and it decimated the leaves on virtually all of our maples that were at, sort of out on the benches. Um, <coughs> Anybody seen that in Northern Ireland? Yeah, they got a bit of. Um, yeah, again, it'll be probably quite specific locations where you've seen that sort of damage occur. Um, in, uh, generally speaking, not a disaster. It's a little bit of a disaster for for somebody like ourselves who are trying to sell maples. The, the maples you see out that I brought for, for sale, um, not only do we get them after the frost, but in any case. They've been in our greenhouse since they came. They, these are imported this year. Uh, most of the maples out there from Korea. Um, so you're not seeing any damage to those. Um, the two maples in, in the Willabog collection, in my own personal collection, were we got them in recently and completely defoliated them. But that, that one of the things I'm going to talk about today is, is defoliation uh, a bit later on. Um, so anybody going to raise any other questions about what their trees are doing, whether they're growing, whether they're not growing? Cop Copper Beach were lovely last year, this year were absolutely pathetic. In, in, what, in manifesting itself in what way, absolutely the, pathetic? The leaves, the few leaves compared to last year was full leaf mm. and it just doesn't look happy. Mm. And this is bonsai rather than a tree in the ground, yeah. Um, Anybody else with a similar sort of experience? A tree not doing as well as I expected? Uh, no yeah, I think the, the, the winter we had was yeah, very good, we're getting, exactly. and it's taken them a long time even to get over it, like, you know? That's, that's exactly I think that exactly there's exactly probably really. what's happening there. It's too. even worse than that, in a way, really, because um, if you think about it, uh, we've had, in the UK as a whole, has had two very severe winters in one year. Not in a Start calendar year. year. <laughs> Start a year and end of year. Yeah. Within one 12 month period, we had two very severe winters. <clears throat> so 2009, the winter came late, came well after Christmas and was very severe. And um, 2010, the winter came. Uh, hang on. Early. Well, anyway, you know what I mean. Never mind the dates. Um, what year is it? I have no idea. And the period between, of course, was quite short and not a particularly good growing season. Um, so I'm almost certain that your Copper Beach is suffering from the effects of those two very severe winters. And to illustrate that further, um, a tree that uh, uh, I've I bought in Italy about four years ago. Um, actually, I bought it to be sold, but it ended up going in Mr. Greedy's bonsai collection. Um, we would all refer to it as English oak, which I think is a little bit unfortunate because this tree had never been in anywhere near England mm. until I brought it back from Italy. Quercus petrea. I, um, it, the only common name it seems to have is English oak, but it's found all over Europe. So anyway, you, but you all know the oak I mean, the oak that's. Mm almost certainly growing out there. Now, a native tree, uh, generally, by most standards, thought of as pretty damn tough, really. Uh, anyway, the, the, um, the tree stood outside. Uh, it's a big tree, mind you. It's not a little weedy thing. It's a tree with a trunk like this standing. And it was in a pot this big, so not a tiny little pot. And it was in a goodish growing medium, more or less pumice, which, you know, for those of you, we won't go all over the growing mediums from March, but, you know, pumice is a very, very good growing medium. Um, when it's dry, it's full of air, so it's a good insulator. So all the factors I mentioned, you'd begin to think, well, it's a tree that shouldn't really give us a problem. Um, it stood out for the first of the two winter periods that we've been talking about. It stood outside, along with almost all of the native bonsai that we have, the elms and the field maples and so on, birch, all stood outside. Um, now, this tree clearly didn't like that first winter that we've been talking about. 
but it grew last year. It didn't grow well, but it grew. So I thought, well, thank goodness for that. It's recovered. It's going to take me a little while to, to you know, build some vigour back into it. It's going to take almost forever, in any case, to build a canopy on this huge trunk. But it was going to be an interesting exercise. So this winter, it went into the polytunnel at the start of the bad weather. Now, of course, our polytunnel is it's not a heated polytunnel, so everything in the polytunnel still froze. Um, but, I mean, for instance, we had trident maples in the polytunnel, not that one actually, but uh, other trident maples, and they had exactly the same experience and have grown away relatively well this year. The oak that I'm talking about is, as of we speak, stone dead. Um, and the only thing I can think of is two successive spells of very bad weather with a very poor growing medium growing season in the in the middle just led the tree to expire now this brings into some big play something else that i touched on briefly at some point last time i'm sure and we'll keep coming back and mentioning it it's been pertinent to lots of things we do in bonsai the age of the tree with very young vigorous trees they will withstand all kinds of punishment. With really old, venerable old trees, they are much less likely to stand setbacks. And they're much more likely, um, even if they're relatively um, established as bonsai, the very old trees are going to be a good bit more vulnerable. Also, not always of course, but um, going hand in hand with very old trees, when we talk about bonsai, it often means very expensive trees as well. So, for goodness sake, if you've got trees that are even approaching that category, please give them that little bit more thought about what they might need to, to get through the winter. Um, I did one... That goes on. Um, so, but the, actually, what do we do about your beech tree? Well, you've got to protect it next year through the winter you you give it whatever good care you can this year to help it get through this year and grow as best as it possibly can but um, you've got to think in terms so that next winter if you didn't protect it and we got another bad winter it could just be enough to kill it and you don't want that to happen so you protect it however you do it if you've got a greenhouse or well and good if not then it's a deciduous tree so in the winter it needs no light so it could come in your garage, in your shed, in your basement. It doesn't want to come in the warm of the kitchen, of course. Um, if you've got none of those options, then a bit of bubble wrap around the pot and then sit the whole thing in a bin line. That will protect the roots to some extent. Quite, quite a large extent. Bearing in mind that the damage, uh, the, the poor growth you're seeing, is actually nothing whatsoever to do with this part of the tree. It's entirely to do with this part of the tree. So you don't really need to worry about protecting this part of the tree. It's this part of the tree. It's the roots that you actually need uh, to protect. Um, that was one of the main things I planned to deal with in this first session. Um, the fact that two, two periods of bad, bad weather occurred within a 12-month period. And a lot of people have said to me, well, what did you experience at the nursery of Bonsai? Well, surprisingly few losses. Uh, my big oak was one. Uh, my best black pine was another, but that could be a completely different story, although related, I think, also. When you run a Bonsai nursery, and also you, you um, are presumptuous enough to teach a school, it's maybe not a good idea to tell people too much about your losses. <coughs> Thank you.